Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to tell you about the Charleston beat and how it's uh, evolved, well not evolved really, how it's still used in songs today even though it was invented almost a hundred years ago in 1923. Oh wait! It was not invented a hundred years ago in 1923. Uh, the Charleston turns out has a little bit of a complicated history which uh, as musicians, we need to, to know about this. So, first things first, the Charleston is a dance and a beat. The beat is just a simple syncopation, like a dotted quarter with then an eighth note tied to the next quarter note and a quarter note on beat four. So that would be like one, two, and, four, one, two, and, Four, one, two, and four. But the Charleston's more than that. The Charleston is that syncopation, but it's over a swing two and four. Like one, and four, one, and four, one, and four, one, and four, one. Now that's different from other things that it does have a lot in common with, like a, a Bo Diddley or a Son 3-2 Clave, which are almost the exact same thing as each other. That would be Bo Diddley, because you have it with that rock and roll backbeat, that 2 and 4. Son 3-2 Clave would just be... So this beat existed before the song Charleston made it famous in the Broadway play Runnin' Wild in 1923. The writer of the song Charleston and the choreographer borrowed their material directly from the African American community in Charleston. Now obviously this African American community are descendants of former slaves, and these slaves had a, a dance with its own uh, rhythm called, anyway, called Juba. And Juba was performed without any drums because like many things slaves were banned from doing, they were unfortunately banned from drumming. Anyway, so to pat Juba, you would do something like this on your hands and knees. Let's see if I can get the camera angle to, to work with me here. But you do that while sitting. That's where that syncopation comes from. That's one of the main patterns to pat juba. Now, juba as a dance is also the primary influencer to what becomes Charleston. So. In Juba, you've got these uh, swiveling uh, heels. Well, like you're up on the balls of your feet, swiveling your heels. Um, you've got some kicks out to like to the side and behind you, and to the front of you. And you've got a kind of a forward-leaning body position. Those are all things that the choreographer for Charleston borrows straight from Juba dancers. So the Charleston dance is kind of a flash in the pan. It reaches peak popularity in the mid-20s and kind of dies out by the 30s, both as a dance and as a, a rhythm used in new music. But the Charleston does directly influence dances and musics that come later in the 30s. So, yeah, now in the 30s, we start to get Lindy Hop, where... Uh, which draws upon Charleston as one of its few primary influences. 
then you get uh, the big big bands and swing bands in the 30s and 40s that also bring elements of Charleston into that music and take carry that into the future. But it doesn't end there because the Charleston lives on in rock and roll in the 50s and 60s, like we mentioned Bo Diddley earlier, that's like Charleston-esque. You get uh, songs like the Beatles, um, Can't Buy Me Love, oh, everybody tells me so, Can't Buy Me Love, oh, that's Charleston. Um, but I prepared a few examples on the drum kit that are really fun. Uh, kind of unique drum beats that do use this old beat from, not Charleston, from Juba. Uh, again, the Charleston innovation is to put the Juba beat with jazz beats. So it's uh, the jazz two and four. So it's that fusion together that does make Charleston. Anyway, let's go to the drum kit and do some songs in rapid fire. So I had a ton of fun preparing music and researching for this video. I learned a lot of things I didn't know about this silly little rhythm, the Charleston. Turns out the history behind the Charleston is not trivial. It's obscure, but it shouldn't be. And I think as musicians, we owe it to the African-American community to bring this history up when we talk about Charleston. I'll see you in the next one.